Hi everybody, it's Tim and we're going to do another video today. Today we're going to talk about potassium sulfate. This is the sixth video uh, heading into our second week now. I missed today because of audio issues, but that's fine. We're going to keep going unless we, every day, unless there's an issue when I might miss a day. Uh, weekdays though, however. Uh, with potassium sulfate, there's four parts of the body that you really need to consider when thinking about a potassium sulfate deficiency. Skin, mucous membranes, liver, and kidneys. Now, we understand there's potassium there, right in the word. Sulfate is sulfur. Sulfur is one of the greatest detoxifiers of your skin, your liver, and your kidneys, as well as your mucous membranes, by the way. Most people associate with the, the first three. A lot of people don't know about the last. But anyway, the other thing that you need to know is that I've talked in, in, in the previous videos about iron phosphate or ferrum phosphate combating stage one inflammation. I talked about potassium chloride combating stage two inflammation. Uh, and potassium sulfate is the one that combats stage three inflammation. So always think about inflammation, which you can see some in this photo as well. You can see some redness in the cheeks going on. That's to be expected with somebody with a potassium sulfate deficiency. So I'm going to talk about, first talk about the main facial signs. When you, Again, when you're looking for potassium sulfate, always look for yellow. And here's where you're seeing it, right here. You see the yellow around the mouth? In potassium sulfate, you will see yellow around the mouth, on the skin around the eyes, and in the corners of the eyes. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I can see it. But once the video gets compressed and uploaded, and they compress it. Actually, it won't be compressed before I upload it. It'll be compressed after it's uploaded. And they kind of take away some of the quality of the video and the images themselves. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. But there is small amounts of yellowing in the inside corners of her eyes. If you had her keep her face straight pointing at me and then look to the left with just her eyes, look to the right with just her eyes, you would see yellow on the inner corners, inner parts of the eyes that aren't openly visible when she's looking straight forward. So let's move to the vanity, the vanity issues. Uh, look for yellow, look for the yellowing, look for yellowing in the corners of the eyes. Right here, we're seeing what is a liver or kidney spot. In this, it's hard to determine. Normally, liver spots have much darker uh, pigmentation than kidney spots. To me, from here, it looks like a kidney spot. So either one, potassium sulfate and sodium sulfate, would come into play. But for now, we're going to talk about potassium sulfate. Let's get into the vanity issues so we don't drag this out too long. Again, always inflammation is going to be expected in somebody with a potassium sulfate deficiency. Premature graying hair. I see some gray hair. I don't remember how old this young lady is, but let's call it premature. We're going we're to call you young. Uh, another one where hyperhidrosis would be expected. Most potassiums, you're going to hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating is going to be an issue. The age spots that we're seeing, age spot, it's, they're really not age spots, but that's what they're most commonly known as, so that's what I'm going to say. Uh, skin tags around the neck. Uh, again, brown eyelids in some cases, not all cases. The tongue will be yellow as well. Yellow around the mouth or eyes on the skin. Yellow in the corner of the eyes. And of course, that facial rose. Those are your vanity issues that are associated with a deficiency in potassium sulfate. When it comes to behavioral issues, depression, self-hatred, jealousy, outbursts of rage, lack of self-awareness, constant stress, lack of initiative, unfriendly, aggressive, and attention deficit is also associated. Moving on to the health issues, we have fatty liver, of course, because we're talking about liver congestion, liver issues, so fat will store around the liver. Flatulence, 
immunodeficiency, meaning low immune system, constantly getting colds or the flu, irritable bowel, tachycardia, rheumatoid arthritis. This is one that you would use in pneumonia and fever. Unlike ferrum phosphate, this is one you would use. Uh, low oxygen saturation, vertigo, and diabetes type 2, not the autoimmune type 1 version. That's it. You now know the vanity issues, you know the health issues, you know the behavioral issues. Uh, you know it's related to the skin, related to the mucous membranes, the liver, and the kidneys. Do you know it combat stage 3 inflammation? But let's have a look at somebody else's eyes on the before we close this off. And here's a nice close look up at somebody else's eyes. We're seeing yellowing in the corners. I hope you can see this. This is blown up a bit more so that you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. When you see that, think of sulfates, always the sulfates. But the last thing I need to finish with, uh, just to be forthcoming, is that if you have a sulfa allergy, you might want to be careful of any any tissue salt that ends with the word sulfate. Uh, they, they can be related, depending on the severity of your allergy, they may or may not bother you. I know many people with sulfa allergies who have done, who have or has taken uh, sulfate uh, tissue salts and have had no issues. Uh, I do recall one individual who claimed that they did. And because of that, I had to, I, ha I feel obligate, morally and ethically obligated to tell you that. Anyway, that's it for now. See you next time.